بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم ببركة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem <coughs> reminds us about those individuals who love to meet him and hope for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. I want everybody to imagine that we're in a situation, a particular situation, and you all can relate to this because we all live and work in the real world. You have your employer. Your employer has signed a contract with you, has made an agreement with you that you're going to do a particular job. He sends you to do the job and he set a date for your meeting. On that particular date, he's going to assess whether you've done the job properly so he can pay you and give you what you deserve or whether you haven't done that job properly, but you've wasted the time and you haven't met the terms of the agreement and the contract, in which case, most likely your employer will do what? He will relieve you from your job. So this is the situation that many of us face in, in the real world. In the corporate world, many of us face the same situation. We've been given a contract, we have a job to do, and we have our employer who we're going to meet and he's going to see whether we've done the job or not. If it's up to standards, we get paid. We go home with full pockets. And if it's not up to standard, we don't get paid. And if we've wasted our time too much, most likely our employer will get rid of us, put somebody else in our place. Everybody knows this situation. We deal with this situation every day in our lives. Who is our true employer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased, has exchanged, the lives and the wealth of the believers so that he can give them paradise in return. So our employer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our contract, our job description is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In that is written everything that we are expected to do in this dunya. These are the details of our contract. Pray five times a day. Give zakat. Fast in the month of Ramadan. Perform hajj. Do not harm the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not forget your meeting in the akhirah. These are the terms of our contract with Allah. Do not cheat people. Do not lie. Do not sell that which is haram. Do not chase after the dunya. All of this is in our agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our contract. These are, this is the job description that we have in the Quran and the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we, have, we, are the, we are the employees, our employer is Allah. We have our contract and our job description. And we also have the day of our meeting with our employer. And that is the day that we pass away. That's the day where we meet our employer. And he will assess the work that we have done. He will assess whether we've met the terms of our contract and our job description, or whether we have wasted our time and not fulfilled the terms of our agreement with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْضُوا فَبَايِعُ النَّفْسَهُ فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُوبِقُهَا أو كما قال عليه السلام. He said, all people are workers, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they are working to purchase themselves, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And they are either the liberators of their own souls or they are the destroyers of their own souls. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can either purchase your own success in the Akhirah or you can be the one who is the cause of your own destruction in the Akhirah. We are all workers and employers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us. Kullun nasi yaqdu. All of mankind are workers and you will either liberate yourself from the fire of Jahannam or you will destroy yourself by, by going against the terms of your contract with Allah and the terms of your job description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for you in his Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi has given to us in the sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is our contract with Allah. If we fulfill it, we get paid. How do we get paid? We get Jannah. How do we get paid? We get the company of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa how do we get paid? We get the pleasure of Allah in the Akhirah, which is the greatest reward. So this is how we get paid if we fulfill the terms of our agreement and our contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that every single one of us is aware that we have a meeting with our true employer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we prepare for that meeting? What should be our attitude towards that meeting that we're going to have with our employer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi explains people in this regard are of three categories. The first category is al-munhamiq, the foolish individual. And this is that person who does not remember the meeting with Allah, does not remember death. And if they do remember it, they only remember it as a burden. You know, like somebody, they know they have a particular, they have, you know, the date for their meeting is the 10th of November, for example. And they constantly say to themselves, I oh, can't be bothered with this meeting. Can't be bothered with this meeting. And they put off preparing for it. They don't want to prepare for it. So they say, okay, I'll prepare tomorrow. I'll prepare tomorrow. Can't be bothered with this meeting. So Imam al-Ghazali says the first category of people in regards to their, uh, uh, in terms of their remembrance of the Akhirah and their preparation for the afterlife, it is this category. The foolish people who put off preparation for the Akhirah. They put it off. Uh, they can't be bothered with preparing for the Akhirah. They do not remember death. And they do not remember their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first category of people. The second category are those individuals, he says, at taib The one who is seeking tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is seeking repentance from Allah. What is their state? They remember the meeting often. They constantly remember that they've got a meeting coming up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like an individual who is serious about their employment. They know 10th of November is the, the deadline for the work. My boss is going to see all my work. What do they do? Day and night they prepare. They don't sleep because they're so worried. Day and night they prepare and they prepare. Why? Because they think they may fail in that meeting. Or they think they haven't prepared correctly for that meeting. So they prepare and they prepare and they prepare. Imam al-Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi says the second category of people are these individuals who are constantly in preparation for their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they are worried that maybe they have not done enough preparation to be successful in their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gives a beautiful example. He says, this is like the lover who wants to meet the beloved, but they don't want to meet the beloved in a state whereby they will meet them and the beloved won't be happy with them. What do they do? They spend more time and they delay the meeting so that they can prepare enough and, 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 and so that they make their beloved happy. Imam al-Ghazali says the same is with the, with the abd, the servant, and his lord or her lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're constantly in preparation for meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't want to meet Allah in a state that Allah is displeased with them. They don't want to meet Allah in a state that Allah is displeased with them. This is the second category of people. The third category of people who remember the akhirah, and prepare for death. Remember their meeting with their employer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Arif. Those who have recognized Allah. And those who recognize their duty in this life. What is their state? How do they remember their meeting with their employer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are like the good employees. Who they know they've got a meeting on a particular date. And what do they do? They prepare in advance. They prepare in advance. They don't leave it to the last day. So they prepare for that meeting in advance. They know, all right, 10th of November is the meeting. I better get ready now. I better get ready now, otherwise I'll lose my job. I better get ready now, otherwise I won't get paid. They prepare in advance for that. 
And so this is the third category of people in terms of their remembrance of their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They prepare in advance and they look forward to their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They look forward to their meeting with Allah. Why? Because they're fully prepared to meet their Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. They look forward to it. They do not fear their meeting with their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's the day they will meet their beloved. So this, these are the th three categories of people in terms of their remembering of the afterlife. Their remembering of their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of us must ask ourselves, which of these three categories do we belong to? Are we like the employee who delays everything, puts it off, doesn't prepare for the meeting? Because we don't give it enough value or we procrastinate and we waste time? Or are we like the employee who's worried about the meeting so we spend day and night constantly preparing for that meeting with our employer? Or better yet, are we like that employee who prepares in advance and is ready for that meeting and looks forward to that meeting because they know they will be successful? Which category do we belong to? With our employer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of us must ask ourselves this question. Every single one of us must, must be aware of where we are and we, where we stand with our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, this is incredibly important for us to understand. We have this meeting with Allah and we must prepare for this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, and, and the way to remove negligence, the way to remove procrastination from ourselves, in order for us to prepare for this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first step to do that is to make remembrance of the meeting itself. Remember death often. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Akfiru dhikra ladhat. Remember often that which will cut off all pleasures. Death, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember often that thing which cuts off all pleasures, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the first step to prepare to removing negligence from our hearts and being prepared for the akhirah to make mention or to remember death often and what does it mean to remember death it do, does it mean to to say death all the time or to talk about death all the time this is not what it means to remember death sayyiduna abu darda radiyallahu ta'ala anhu from the sahaba he explained to us what de remembering death means he said rahmat radiyallahu ta'ala an idha dhukirat al mauta fa'udd nafsaka ka ahadihim he said when one person has passed away and it is made mention to you, you learn that somebody has passed away. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, count yourself in their place. Put yourself in their shoes. This is what it means to remember death. He said radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Put yourselves in their shoes. Whenever somebody has passed away, put yourselves in their shoes. He said radiallahu ta'ala If you attend a janazah, remember that tomorrow you will be prayed upon. If you carry a coffin to the graveyard, then remember tomorrow somebody will carry you to your grave. If you put a coffin on a mayyit, remember tomorrow somebody will wrap a coffin around your body. If you read a Salatul Janazah for an individual and ask Allah to forgive them, every time you do takbir, remember those takbirs will be pronounced upon you as well. This is what it means to remember death often. We put ourselves in the shoes of the one that has passed away. And every single one of us should be doing this constantly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked by Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are there any individuals who will be raised with the shuhada, raised with the martyrs on the day of judgment? He said sallallahu alayhi wa those people who remember death constantly 100 times a day, such that it drives them to fear of Allah and taqwa, they will be raised with the shuhada on the day of judgment. Constantly to remember our akhirah. This is incredibly important for us as believers in Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we remove the negligence from our hearts and the, and, the, and the foolishness from our hearts that tells us that we're going to live forever. Which brings me on to our next point, which is the second way we remove this negligence from ourselves and we prepare for our meeting with Allah, with our employer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to remove Tulul Amal, Tulul Amal from ourselves. What is Tulul Amal? Tulul Amal is to have long distant hopes. To have long distant hopes. I'm going to build this. I'm going to make this. I'm going to live this long. I'm going to visit this land. I'm going to do all of these things to remove, rid this from our hearts. 
because we do not know about our next breath, never mind our next year or next 10 years or next 50 years to remove all of this from our heart. Just as when you meet your employer, when you know you've got a meeting with your employer, do you think about becoming CEO of the company? Do you think about becoming you know, the manager at the top? You don't. You're too worried about the meeting. The same is with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we get caught up in you know, long hopes and dreams that we're going to build this and we're going to make this, let's ch have a reality check and remember, we have this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could come at any moment for any single one of us. So this is incredibly important for us to understand. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed by some people. ذات عشية إلى الناس. He said that it is described they were people living in comfort, luxurious lives. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, أما تستحيون من الله? Do you not have haya, modesty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وما ذاك يا رسول الله? O Messenger of Allah, how shall we have modesty? What is, what is the modesty that you're telling us to have, O Messenger of Allah, before Allah? What modesty should we have? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَجْمَعُ مَا لَا يَأْكُلُونَ وَتَأْمَلُونَ مَا, تد... ما لَا تُدْرِكُونَ وَتَبْنُونَ مَا لَا تَسْكَنُونَ تسكنون. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, You are gathering that which you may not eat. You are gathering that which you may never eat. Buying food and storing it in one fridge, in two fridges, in five fridges and freezers, as though we're going to live forever. You are gathering that which you may not eat, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَتَأْمَلُونَ مَا لَا تُدْرِكُونَ He said, you are hopeful for that which you may never achieve, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to build and expand your houses and your material possessions, when, when, in, when in reality you may not ever reach that destination. You, you are hopeful of that which you may never reach. وَتَأْمَلُونَ مَا لَا تَسْكُنُونَ He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are building that which you may never live in, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You build tall houses and mansions for yourselves, and you do not know that tomorrow your soul may leave your body, you may never live in that house that you built for yourself. Have haya before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is our, our life in this dunya, and these are the hopes and dreams that we have. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demonstrated this to the Sahaba. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took three sticks. He planted one in front of him. He planted one to his side, and he planted the third one very far. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this one, this is insan. The second stick which is close to the first one, he said, this is the akhirah. And the meeting with Allah, very close with one another. And the one he planted far away from the, th from the other two, he said, these are the hopes and dreams of Bani Adam. He said, which one is closer? Your death and your akhirah. Which one is further? The hopes and dreams that you have. Insan prepares for that one and takes care of that one that is so far and forgets the one which is very close to them. They're meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa demonstrated to us how we should not have excessive hopes and dreams in this life for, uh, for we do not know if tomorrow our soul is taken from us. And there is one exception to this rule. And the exception to that rule is those individuals who desire long lives so they can spend them in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked Ayyu nasi khair ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, which people are the best? Which people are the greatest, ya Rasulullah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Man tala umruhu wa hasuna amaluhu. Allahu Akbar. He said, those people who have long lives, they are elderly and they have spent their whole life in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the best people, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ayyu nasi shar ya Rasulullah. Which are the worst of people, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Man tala umruhu wa sa'a amaluhu. Those people who have long lives, but their actions are the worst, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa They are the worst of people. So to have a wish to have a long life in the obedience of Allah, this is, this is an exception to the rule. This is why he said, sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the best of you are those that Allah has given long lives to, and they have used those long lives for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their beards have gone white in bowing down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hair has gone gray, giving sadaqah and charity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wrinkles have appeared on their face in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala make us amongst them. So these are those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Those people who have long lives 
and they spend those long lives in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the first two steps that we have to prepare for our meeting for Allah. Number one is to, it is, uh, to remember our meeting and remember death. Number two, to rid ourselves of long hopes and dreams so we do not know if we're going to achieve them. The third one, which is the most important, is increasing in our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If our love for Allah was complete, then this dunya would not be something we run towards. We would run towards the akhirah. Our death would not be something we run away from. Our death would be something we welcome. Because now we are going to meet our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So complete love in Allah means that we are happy to meet him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu. Wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ahu. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet that person. And whoever hates to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will hate to meet them. And what does it mean to love to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It means we spend our lives preparing for this meeting with our employer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to, to, to love to meet Allah. You spent your life preparing, and then when your soul is taken, you are ready to go and meet your maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us can say, myself included, I remind myself before I remind anybody else. How many of us can say, if our soul was taken at this moment in time, we'd be ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us can say that right now, if Allah ta'ala took our, our souls from our bodies, we would be content and would be ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The likes of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu had this state of contentment when they were about to pass away. Listen to the, how Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu spent his last moments and listen to the comfort with which he left this dunya. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, when he was on his deathbed, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyida Aisha, his daughter, radiallahu ta'ala anha, came to visit him. And she said to him, he instructed her first, he said, I'm about to die. Allahu Akbar. I'm about to pass away. The clothes I am wearing, bury me in these clothes after you give me ghusl. And leave the new clothes for somebody who is alive, yani for charity. Leave that for the charity. Bury me in the clothes that I have. Even in his death, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not have a desire for, for uh, taking anything with him. He gave, remember, he is the same Sahabi who gave everything in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi called everybody for charity, Sayyidina Umar gave 50% of his wealth. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave all of his wealth in the way of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have left Allah and his messenger. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. This is Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. And, he was, and this is his, his, uh, his, uh, when he's about to pass away. Sayyidah Aisha, she said to him, she was a daughter, concerned about her father. Daughters, uh, the love between a father and a daughter is unbelievable. She said to her father, shall I call for a doctor? Let me call our doctor so he can take a look at you. So maybe he can cure you. Maybe you can stay with us longer. And he said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, listen to his reply. قَدْ نَظَرَ إِلَيَّ طَبِيبِي وَقَالَ إِنِّي فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, My doctor, he is watching me. Allahu Akbar. My doctor, he is watching me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ نَظَرَ إِلَيَّ طَبِيبِي He said, My doctor is watching me. وَقَالَ إِنِّي فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ And he said to me already, I'm going to do whatever I please. I need no other doctor. Allahu Akbar. This is the passing of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu entered upon Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And I finish on this advice. And he said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, Ya Khalifa Rasulillah, Oh representative of the Messenger of Allah, you are about to leave this dunya. Give us some advice. Leave us with some words of wisdom. And listen to these pieces of advice and take these with you. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, he said radiallahu ta'ala anhu, إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَاتِحٌ عَلَيْكُمُ الدُّنْيَا فَلَا تَأْخُذُنَّ مِنْهَا إِلَّا بَلَاغًا He said رضي الله تعالى عنه, Allah has given you the dunya. Do not take from the dunya except that which you need. رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said. Don't take the dunya from the dunya except that which you need. Don't become so greedy from the, uh, for the dunya that you forget your akhirah. His first piece of advice. Number two, he said رضي الله تعالى عنه, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ مَنْ صَلَّ صَلَاةَ الصُّبْحِ فَهُوَ فِي ذِمَّةِ اللَّهِ Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, whoever prays Salatul Fajr is under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So do not move away or do not be deprived of the protection of Allah, lest Allah put you into the fire of Jahannam face first, he said. His last two pieces of advice before he passed away. Number one, do not chase after the dunya at the expense of your akhirah. Number two, do not forget your Salatul Fajr. Where are we with this advice of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu? So our death is coming to every single one of us. This is not a reality which any one of us can doubt. We are meeting our employer and we must be prepared for our meeting with our employer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa lisa'il al-mu'mineen. Please perform your sunnahs. Jazakumullahu khair.